Hey everyone, welcome to Average Joe Preparedness. My name is Rick, and I'm an Average Joe. If you're new here, you usually start off with basic emergency preparedness, and then move into the realm of practical preparedness, which is huge, and then rarely, we to barely touch on worst case scenarios. And uh, that's usually how I do business. However, I'm gonna do things a little backwards today. The reason being is because there's so much going on that if you go through the feeds, if you get on the news, whatever, everything's worst case scenario. It's like, ah, these things, which we'll go over in a second. But I'm an advocate that everything starts here at basic emergency preparedness. And then it builds and it builds and builds worst case scenario. But a lot of times people are trapped or they're pulled in by the worst case scenario. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do it backwards this time. We're gonna talk about worst case scenario and then we're gonna bring it down to practical preparedness. And then you're gonna see that no matter what it is you're getting ready for, this worst case, I can't do it, it's gotta be over here. This worst case, blah, 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 blah. You're gonna find that it all starts right here with basic emergency preparedness. Okay, I'm gonna list off just some off the top of my head of worst case scenarios and maybe headlines and subjects that I see in, in other content creators or in the headlines in the news or whatever. And that would be things like uh, the economy and the price going up and inflation just running away and uh, the, the dollar crashing and uh, let me see, we stuff to do with finances because we're coming back to finances. We're gonna come back to a lot of stuff. You guys know I always do finances if you've been here a while. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the stock market crashing. And then we have things like uh, wars, you know, not to get edited on YouTube, but wars, we'll say, or conflicts, whatever. We've got the one that's in uh, Eastern Europe that's been going on for years. Yes, if you go back and watch videos, content creators, they've been, they've been just milking that thing for years, guys. Uh, so for years, and then you've got... Uh, uh, what's going on in Israel with the and uh, the Palestinians, and then you've got North and South Korea is just going up, and you've always got China and Taiwan, and now you've got the stuff on the southern border. Now that translates a little bit out of war to civil war, I guess, because I'm seeing it in the news. I'm not saying that. Hopefully, I don't get edited, but it's in the news now. And the only reason I'm bringing it up, or I waited to do this video, is I saw it last night. And when I saw it last night, I said, "Man, Rick, you've been holding off on your first video." Of, of 2024, but you gotta do it. So what I saw was, and what do they call it, legacy media? In the legacy media, they said, it's a uh, constitutional crisis. Does that sound familiar to you guys? Does that one sound familiar? Cause you know you heard it just not that long ago. That That's the big one they pull. They pull that card out of their back and they're like, constitutional crises. I was like, wow, as soon as I heard it first time, first time I heard it, I was like, man, you gotta make a video the next day, which is today. So that's what I'm doing that. And, uh, yeah. Oh, and an election year is coming up and rah, civil unrest and, ah, and I'm sure you guys can come up with a whole other list of worst case scenarios. Yes. All the way up to if I was giving you your daily dose of doom and gloom, it would be nuclear war. Ah, nuclear Armageddon. And I'm sure somebody right now is going, Rick, man, I don't know if I like your attitude. You're making light of, you're making light of this. You know what I'm saying? You should be more serious. Mm. It's not the way I work. It's not my life experience. Yes. I've been through tons and tons of stuff and being all stoic or whatever, or uh, making light of a serious situation, but not taking that serious situation lightly. Neither one's gonna affect the situation, okay? All it does is affect the way I deal with it. So I'm gonna stay positive. And you know what? I highly recommend you guys think about that. Yes, you can just be as upset as you want about anything or anyone or any group or any situation, blah, blah, blah. I don't care what it is, yes? You can be as upset as you want, but it ain't helping you out. You, you picking up what I'm laying down? Negative emotion blocks our brain function. I'll say it tons of times. Yes? Yes. Okay, so let's take any of these worst case scenarios and let's back them up. <laughs> yes? So I can, and anyone you guys can come up with that I didn't. That you're like, Rick, you forgot about like ice storms and hurricanes and tornadoes. Oh my. Or earthquakes or whatever, blizzards or floods or you, you get what I'm saying? Any of these things. Okay, a couple of things. First off, oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna jump around. Shoots and ladders, that's the way my brain works. So uh, that brings me up to something that I've been talking about. If you guys have been here a while, come on now. You know you've heard this before, these things I'm gonna mention. And so the things I've been talking about, and I'm starting to see them other content creators, which makes me happy. Not because other content creators are doing it per se, but so it validates to me that I haven't been giving you guys wrong information because that would make me sad. 
because that's not what I want to do. I always want to give you guys the correct information. So, and one of the things I saw, which made me happy, which I've said before, if you've been here, you know, is you cannot stop what's happening. Those external things, they are inevitable. So that's one of the things I saw that I've been telling you guys. So apparently now, wisdom of the crowd, I wasn't giving you guys bad information, which makes me very happy. But if you just looked at it, you know you can't stop those things. All right, so take any of these worst case scenario things and let's back them up a little bit. And we're going to look at what is going to happen to you over here if these things happen. And tons of stuff is going to happen. And then we bring it down and then we work at them here. But we're starting with the worst now. I usually start here and, and work up. So, and the first one, come on. If you've been here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this slow. I'm going to do this slow. If you've been here a while, what's the first thing I want to bring up? Yep, finances. That's exactly right. Because if any of these things happen and your finances are not in order, you are going to be caught short. So that's why I always come down here, basic emergency preparedness. One of the first things I always, I don't want to say preach, that's a bad word. One of the first things I always bring up is that it's important in my life experience and in logic and math is your finances. So let's take any of these. The prices of everything is going to go up. In interest rates are going to go up. Your retirement accounts are going to go down. Everything is just going to be anarchy. And the and the better prepared you are financially, the better off you're going to be no matter what these things happen. Let's say an ice storm or a blackout or whatever, and you have to move somewhere else temporarily. You see what I'm saying? You have to get out of the area. Okay, well, you're going to have to pay for gas. You might have to like rent a hotel. You need that money. You need to have money or good credit or whatever. You see what I'm saying? If a war happens or what prices are going to go up, there's there's going to be less food available, which means prices are going to go up. Gas is going to, you need to have a nest egg. You need to, oh, that brings me to the next one that I've been saying for a long time. And it is now becoming common among, uh, among content creators, which means if we go with wisdom of the crowd that I have not been giving you incorrect information, which makes me happy. That's what I don't want to do. And that is that you are your own first responder. Uh, you are your own first responder. Does that make sense? And that's when it comes across the board. Now, how did you get that, Rick, when it comes to money? Let me tell you what. You're your own first responder when it comes to your finances. You should be in charge. Not a bank, not a financial institution. You. You are the person that needs to be taking care of you when it comes to your finances. You need to be paying off your debts. You need to be living below your means. So that way when prices go up, it doesn't hit you as hard. You need to have money set aside. You need to have a little account set aside or cash on hand. I have a little cash on hand. I have um, a little bit of money that's put off to the side that I can just grab really fast. I have it in multiple financial institutions, uh, the big ones and the small ones, depending on if the financial markets, bruh, I have money in this one and I have money in this one. So if I close down one, it's not going to destroy me. Yes? Yes. Let's keep going. Financial something, something. Doesn't matter. The dollar collapse or the fiat currency or blah, bring it down here. You need to be taking the steps to correct that. Does that make sense? And that's what I mean by finances. A case in point, little things, just little things to get your guys' thoughts pumping. You guys see this hat right here? This is a wool hat. I've been wearing it all season this year. I have other ones, but what I did was I decided to go out and get the cheapest one made in America. Sorry, guys. But anyways, the cheapest one I could find off Amazon. And that's this right here. And I don't know, it was like five bucks, maybe nine bucks, something like that. It was really inexpensive. I think it was cheaper because I bought two. Doesn't matter. And it works. You guys see, there's no holes. I've only been wearing it for one season. So I've been wearing it for like four months, but I'm talking about like every day because I'm outside and I am not nice to stuff, but it's inexpensive and it works. I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. You don't have to do it. What I mean is get your, get your mind going, start thinking about it. You need to find things that are inexpensive, live, but still work. You with me? Go out there and test stuff. If you get a chance, I put a little teeny bit of small amount of money aside each month to buy stuff that I want to like test out. I have another wool hat and this thing works and it makes me happy. And hopefully it's going to last me season years. Hopefully this thing will last for years. It doesn't look good. You know, I'm sure I could have got some cooler looking one or something, but it's wool and it works and it was cheap. You guys with me? Just throwing it out there. So when it comes to, ah, oh, and this and wars and all this kind of finances, everything is going to get more expensive. Everything is going to get harder to find. 
the finances, all this stuff. You need to bring it back down here. You need to take care of your finances and you need to do it now. And I would recommend doing it before you do anything else because all you're going to do is get yourself more in debt. And that's a bad idea. Okay, and now I'm going to try to tie a couple things together and again, shoot some ladders, see if you guys can keep up with me. And the next thing is, oh, you got all the way down here is medical. Okay, first aid. Let's tie them all together. You need to be your own first responder, which means you need to have medical stuff on hand. I'm going to give you one teeny example. You guys have seen these before. I got like three or four of these years ago. These little bitty boo-boo kits, yes? And then I changed them. I changed what was in here depending on what I needed. Usually I had these in my backpack when we go hiking or biking or whatever. So it's got stuff like moleskin. I know you guys have heard that lots of times before. Little bandages to cover up little, little antiseptic things. So anyways, the point being is you need to take care of yourself. You with me? And then work off these as time goes. Now, let me see. This is my next thing. So I'm doing stuff all the time and I'm trying them out. And before I bring stuff to you guys and say, hey, this works because I don't want to give you incorrect information. So this is the next thing I'm doing. See this right here? I mean, it's cool and it, it gets big. And you guys can see that. But this is what I'm replacing it with. This thing's empty, by the way. I just bought a case. This is my new test. But you see, it's a semi-hard one. And it's going to take all this, but it's going to take something that I like because we do hiking and stuff. We do hiking and biking. Yes? Yes. Now, I'm not selling this. I'm not endorsing whoever this is, but this is how I buy stuff, okay? And I open this up real quick. Hmm. And it's those instant cold packs. You guys know what I'm talking about? Well, if you've ever gone hiking or done anything, you could take... These little boo-boo kits, if you go to play sports of some sort, I love these things because it keeps swelling down and it makes you feel better. Yes, the problem is, can you, can you see that right there? And then I have a medical kit that's a little larger than this. However, they're soft-sided. And a lot of times, because you're supposed to go through your stuff periodically and look at it, a lot of times these things get broken because they're just squishies. You see what I'm saying? So I'm upgrading this. Oh, look at that. You guys see that right there? And then hopefully this won't get squished anymore. This semi-pack will keep other things from getting squished also. And what I'm talking about are things like this. Yes, this is how I buy stuff. Just not, that is a little antiseptic gel. Yes, and it fits really well. And here, I have a couple of them. And I'm sure it's going to fit very well in here if I have a couple of them. But once again, when you're looking through your stuff, which you have to do, by the way, this is going to go to another subject about when you're doing preparedness, it's a never ending story because you have to, you have to check your stuff. You're with me. And a lot of times when I go through my first aid kits, not a lot of times, say about 10%, 15% of the time, these get squished too. They get popped open. I'm hoping that this is going to solve the issue. It's going to solve the issue for the ice packs and it's going to solve because these aren't the only ones. I have antiseptic cream and I have burn cream, burn gel. And again, they're in these same little packages and they tend to get squished. You guys with me? Okay. Rah! Oop. You are your first responder. Now we're still going to stay on medical with this one. Uh, is to have first aid kits. If you get an opportunity is take a first aid class. Please get online, get with the Red Cross, get with your local fire stations, get with... There's nonprofits depending on where you live and find out, or you, they have free videos online, basic, basic emergency uh, medical videos that you can learn. Do you really know how to do those things? It's not like, you know, you watch the movie and go, I could do that, or I could do that. Uh, you really need to get some first aid training. I've gotten first aid training. The lovely lady in my life has got first aid training reoccurring and, it, and it's come in handy. We've actually had to use it. So I highly recommend that because Anarchy, you are your first responder. But if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to do yourself more harm than good. And real quick before this minute's up, that's another thing is don't do things. Don't get equipment that is outside of your realm of experience or training or because you're only going to hurt yourself or hurt someone else. Okay, you're your own first responder. You guys going to get tired of hearing me saying that? Probably. Let me give you another point. And we're going to multitask again. I have a list of things I was going to go over. And that is very basic one, you guys. Ready? One is none. Two is one. Three is better. Yes? Let me give you a case in point. This is the glove that I do my yard work on in, with my right, with my, excuse me, my left hand. Yes? 
because I, my cutting tools are usually in my right hand. Don't get me wrong, I have a leather glove I put on this one, but it's not like this, okay? Let's go over this glove real fast. If you've been here a long time, you've, you've heard the stories. First, let's take a look at this. Do you guys see, this is a leather, do you see the cuts in this? That's because my tools are sharp. Is she with me? Can you only imagine what that would do to my hand if I wasn't wearing that glove? Somebody might say, well, Rick, I can imagine what it does to your hand doing wearing the glove because it's got the cuts in it. Yes. But you see what this is? Do you guys know what that is? I have a second glove on the inside. It is a meat cutter's glove. And they are it's a cut resistant glove. So if it goes through the leather, then it's like a little kind of chain mail looking. Do you guys see that? Do you know why I do this? Because I have cut myself and I've had to go to urgent care because I can't be my own first responder because I don't know how to put stitches in. I bet I could probably do it if the worst case scenario, ah, but let me tell you what, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not sewing up my own finger, all right? And you shouldn't either, but let's keep going. One is not, okay, see, if I cut these and they're damaged, one is none. I'm done. I'm done working for the day because I can't. I can't take the chance of doing this to my finger. You see what I'm saying? I gotta quit. But look, I have another set of gloves waiting. One is none, two is one. Now I can accomplish my work in the day. What else do I have? I have backup gloves. These are the, the meat cutters gloves. You guys see what I'm saying? So I can put it right in my glove. I can take this, which is about to go in the trash. I kept this as an example. I throw it away, I put on my new one, boom, and I'm still going. I'm not cutting myself, I'm being safe, and I'm still being able to accomplish what I need to accomplish each day. You guys picking up what I'm laying down? You are your own first responder. You need to be uh, responsible for yourself, and it starts here. Because let me tell you what, if worst case sound, I gotta work and do all kinds of stuff, I got the tools to do it. Okay, real quick, it'll be like shock, boom, 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 we're gonna do this really fast. Whatever this is up here, uh, if you bring it back down to basic emergency preparedness, you're gonna find that you need water because on any of these contingencies, there's a potential for your water system to be bad or go out temporarily or go out permanently or be contaminated. Whatever these things are, food. Basic emergency to pre preparedness is it starts with three days. Everybody recommends it's more than that, say a week or two weeks or whatever. Now you're getting up here to like a month, but start somewhere because you're going to be ahead of the game when this uh, happens and you're gonna be in the habit of working in that direction. Does that make sense? Finances, first aid, water, food, medical stuff. You need to be handling it before it gets up here. Now, if you want to get into the subject of like boomsticks and 2A or whatever, I don't want to get edited. That's something we don't really discuss here. But let me tell you what, some people call it a basic or maybe like in here, but that's your guys' business. Yes, yes. All right, I don't know if I got the point across that I like to start here and work up, but if you want to start here and back, back it down, you're going to find that all of these things apply. Basic emergency preparedness, it's not overwhelming. If I was to suddenly wake up today, if you came to this channel and just waking up today and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to get ready for this war or the collapse of the dollar, you are going to be so overwhelmed. Don't do it. Bring it down here, start with basic emergency preparedness, and see the logic of how these things will get you ready for these things. But without the panic and the overwhelming and without the fear and the pressure and the, oh, I, I'm gonna go get a first aid kit, you know, and make sure, and maybe I'm gonna watch a video or take a class at local Red Cross, and maybe I can figure out how to, how to use that for, there's not a lot of pressure there. You see what I'm saying? Everything is built off of something small. That's my recommendation. It always has been and always will be. Okay, let's go over a little housekeeping. I, I usually do housekeeping first, I'm gonna plug in. I'm just messing this up. If you guys have been here a while, you're probably dizzy. You're like, Rick, what are you doing? Stop it. Okay, so yeah, it is still cool, but I wanted it warm in here when I did this so I didn't have to wear my jacket. I am wearing a hat though. Yes, why? Because I try to wear this a lot just to wear it out and see if it, see if it was worth the nine bucks or whatever the hell it was, it wasn't that much. And uh, so I'm using my, my heater and someone mentioned in one of the videos I didn't have this on it. And they were asking me if it had bound up because sometimes the bearings are no good. And no, I had taken it off because I was waiting. I had it jury rigged up there. And so I was waiting for this to come in. You guys see what that is? 
This is one of the little like one gallon paint can things. The five gallon ones don't fit on these. They fit on the bigger ones, but not this. And hopefully this year, I'm putting it on my list and you know, hopefully I'll be nice and, and get it or I give it from, to myself is they've actually designed things now intentionally to hook up here so you don't have to jury rig stuff like that. Isn't that cool? Yay. But for now, this is what I'm using. One of those little one gallon ones. I'm putting it on my list to actually get the ones that are designed for it, which I really like the fact that they found uh, customers and they're like, wow, if we just, people are jury rigging stuff, let's just go ahead and make something that works. Does that make sense? I'm gonna see how good it is. But uh, no, I haven't had, uh, to answer the, the, the commenter, I haven't had any issues with this fan. So it's still running, it's not making any noises, the bearings haven't gone out yet, knock on wood. But uh, we'll see how long it is. But remember, this thing is like, I don't know. I don't even know if this thing's a year old yet. So it'd be a while before I run this thing. It'll be a while before I say, hey, this is a great product. Because that's it's got to be a long time coming before I do. But to info you, this one hasn't started making those noises. Yes, yes. And sticking with this, uh, what I'm going to try to get this year I'm sure you guys have seen, you know, the one gallon cylinders. Yes, I know this year I'm hooking up my big, what are they? 20 gallon, 25, 20 gallon. I think they are ones with a little filter and the hose, the stuff I've got, I'm going to run it off of that, but I'm also going to get some of the refillable ones. They're actually refillable and DOT uh, approved for transportation. They have refillable bottles. So they're a little expensive, but supposedly they last a long time. And so I'm waiting for, I usually don't get them things when they first come out. I usually let it go for a while and let that quality control catch up, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I'm gonna get some of the refillable ones, hopefully this year, it's on my list. And uh, we'll see how those work because I don't like dragging around. I like this because I can drag it around with these one little bottles. I don't like dragging around with the big ones. I know it's applicable on some cases and I know eventually I may have to use it and it's good to have because I'm my own first responder when it comes to the heat going out. Because of this, ah, oh, I can keep myself warm. Yes, yes. Okay, still on housekeeping. Do you guys remember this? You've been around for a while. I got one of these and I wasn't so sure about it. You know, this is a little power bank that you can actually use. Or, yeah, you can do your cell phones and all that, but it's big. People are like, wow, that's huge. Usually where they're, yeah, they are. This is one of those ones you can actually jump your car with. And I'm like, are you serious? I'm old school. I've seen, I grew up in the, 70s and 80s and I know how hard it is to jump a car sometimes and you're telling me I can do it with this wee little box yes so then you remember I charged it up and then I unplugged it and I left it out here which this isn't climate controlled but it's not like leaving in your car and I wanted to see how well it held the charge and it did hold the charge fairly well well guess what happened I hadn't started my car for a while it was cold here and you know if you I leave a car you leave a car outside and it's seriously cold and don't start it up. I didn't start it up for a couple of weeks. And I get out there, battery's dead. Yes, yes. Well, guess what? That's right, I'm my own first responder. I'm just messing with you guys. So I have jumper cables, you guys have seen them before and I could have easily brought up another vehicle. The lovely lady in my life, we keep her vehicle here in the garage because she's more special than me. Actually, it's because her car's nicer and I have, a, I have an older car. So I, what the hell, I'll just leave it outside. And I could have drug it out there and I could have, jump it and got it. But I'm like, hey, you know what? I have this thing. And what the hell? You know what I'm saying? I might as well give it a shot. I took this thing and it had been sitting here without a charge and it was down to, I think it was down to like 92%. Okay. And I took it out and I hooked it up and my car started just like that. I kid you not. It just jumped it. Boom. I was like, holy Moses, that's totally cool. So then I looked at it and it went from 92. It had gone from 92 to 97 jump in my car. So what is that? Public math. That's like 5%. That's it. So then I decided to take it one step further. I left the darn thing in my car underneath the back seat out there where it's very weather intensive. Even my garage is better than my car. You with me? Because my car is outside. What I mean by temperature controlled, even though this is in a temperature controlled area. And I decided to leave it out there without charging it and seeing after I jumped it. So it went down to 97. I left it out there for a couple of weeks. And I mean, the weather's bad where we were. It was ice and snow and and then the sun would come out, warm, cold, warm. You guys with me? And I, it was a couple weeks and it only dropped a couple more percentage. I don't think it ever got below 85. Before I finally brought it in, I remembered one day it was on my list. You probably want to bring that thing in and charge it back up again. So it only dropped another couple of few percentage 
after being out in that extreme, what I can say, extreme weather, extreme weather changes. You guys with me? So, I'm old. Oh, by the way, this is kind of where I got the idea for the hard case for the for the uh, first aid kits. So I'm old. I was not really an advocate. I didn't know what to think about these things. I am now an advocate for them. Even an old dog can learn new tricks, guys. Just let you know. Okay, a couple more things before we bring this to an end. Uh, I talked to you about the stuff I get like, I got the darn tough socks, which I'm not advocating for yet because I haven't worn them for years. They're still doing well. As a matter of fact, uh, the regular socks I get that were, yeah, I lost another pair because I hadn't worn through them. And the Dickies, you guys know what I'm talking about if you've been here a while. I had to throw them away. And uh, these darn tufts, which I'm wearing a pair now, they still, none of them have even gotten the slightest little hole in them. So they're still holding up well. However, I'm not going to advocate for them for at least another year. At least another year. Also, I saw another advertiser for the same kind of socks that are guaranteed forever. These ones have a, um, what is it, Marinian? Marinian wool weave in them. And they actually cost less than darn tough socks. So I'm going to probably pick up some of those and put them in my sock rotation. And we'll see how those ones go, too. Yes? Yes. Oh, and the belt. I brought that up that I got that leather belt instead of the cheap ones. Somebody brought up another one that was American-made company. Well, the one I did, which is Hank's belts, I went back and looked. It's American-made, and they're guaranteed for 100 years. Yeah, I doubt I'm going to see that, but it's still holding up, okay? Not, not advertising for them, just saying it's still holding up. Okay, finally, this one's going to give me a lot of probably negative feedback, and I, and I think I'm, I'm going to get it from at least one person because... I know one of the commenters when I brought this up. You guys remember this? I wanted this. I asked for this for Christmas. If I hadn't got it for Christmas, I would have bought it myself. Because I looked at, I looked, I've seen it, and I was like, man, that thing is friggin' cool. You guys remember that? You guys know what this is, right? It's one of those little candle. I'm gonna do this on live, live video. See? It's a little candle. It's got a spring that pushes it up. You can see how far the candle's burnt right there. This can hang up. This little this little glass thing can go down so you can light it and put it back up and these candles last a long time. You guys know what I'm talking about? Well, when I talked about this, uh, there was a commenter that said they loved it. They had the one that's got three candles. It's bigger than this. It's got three candles and they loved it. You guys know who you are? Yes. And you guys know what I'm talking about when, I, when I'm bringing this up? So I've only been messing with this thing for like a month. You with me? And again, I'm going to go at least a year before I finally say, this is my statement about that. But I have to I have to tell you, I'm not trying to be a jerk to this company or anybody who's got these things, but I'm not that impressed, guys. I don't know if I brought it up or I think I mentioned it where it seems a little thin and I don't know if I really trust this handle because this is flame. I'm not an advocate for candles when the power goes out. I know it's a potential. I'm not an advocate for flame, it's dangerous. You guys with me? And don't get me wrong, I've made candles. You guys remember this? Remember this candle? By the way, I made that. Uh, I didn't make the glass. I, I don't know if you guys can see the levels. I used old wax, I, and I have actually have some beeswax, and then I used old wax out of old candles, and it doesn't matter, it smells awesome. But don't get me wrong, I'm not an advocate for flames. As I said, flames are dangerous. And in our modern society, most people don't know to deal with flames. You guys with me? We don't have a lot of fireplaces that, you know, roaring fire and you have, or oil lamps, hurricane lamps, or candles. We don't deal with that kind of stuff. It's dangerous. You guys with me? Now, don't get me wrong. This candle is better than if I just had like one of those old fashioned little candle holders with a single little candle walking around with like Scrooge. Oh, my one little candle. This is safer than that. It is inside of here. And this is this is glass, and you know, if it gets knocked over, the thing's not gonna probably but this thing gets hot. You guys with me? This whole thing gets hot because metal metal conducts heat. So to be honest, if you got something like this, this I can grab when it's lit. The glass doesn't get hot, it's more of an insulator. And this doesn't want to fall over as much as that one does. You guys with me? Again, I'm not trying to be a jerk to the company. I'm not trying to be a jerk to anybody who uh, who has these and who likes them. But I think this is like a niche thing. This is something that uh, if, if you want it, if you need it, then this is for you. But in general, I don't know. So that's my thoughts so far. It's only been a month, guys. 
Okay, so they were just colored right there because of the, be, be ready that that's gonna happen. That was bright and silver, but the flames come up and it gets hot. And this thing gets hot. So I'm still gonna use it. I'm still gonna mess with it. I'm still gonna be, you guys know I'm kind of like rough on stuff. I'm not really careful with it. I use it like I'm gonna use it. I don't use it, I don't abuse it, but I use it like I'm gonna use it without thinking about it. Like I don't sit around and go, I need to be really careful with this because no, I'm just, oh, I need to hang this up and I, and I go to hang it up. So we'll see, we got 11 more months, yes? Because at least a year before I have an opinion on that. And, and again, I'm not trying to make anybody unhappy because I know I've seen these on other channels and blah, 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 but so far, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, now I'm gonna do my normal stuff. Okay, I already went basic, we already went over finances. Ah, when it comes to, uh, oh my God. You guys know I bake bread and I just baked some and I, and I ate it and I made some cookies, a new recipe and they were awesome. And I, I baked some bread for, a new person came into our lives and they're allergic to everything and they really, really missed bread. I baked a bread that has like nothing in it. I had to order stuff off the internet to bake this bread. I'm not, I'm not joking. I did it because somebody asked and I looked at it like a, it was a challenge, but they are literally allergic to everything. And I made a bread that they could actually eat and it was decent. But uh, bread, that's it. So if you guys have been here a while, one of the things I use, because according to the legacy media, they're saying that the economy is fantastic. Everything is great. And our current president is the man when it comes to that. You guys know they're saying that right now because it's election year, but they're saying it. Well, if you've been here a while, you know one of the key indicators that I use is the same loaf of bread at the same store at the same location. That's what I use. I know how much that loaf of bread has costed for years because every time I go into the store, I check it and I purchase it. And when we started off a couple years ago, that loaf of bread was like 86 cents. And then it went to like 88 cents. Okay. And then the last time I brought it up, I think it was like a dollar and 20 something cents. And if you guys do the math, that is, and now I think it was like two or three years ago when it was in the 80 cents. I just went to the store a few days ago, a week ago, and it cost a dollar and 49 cents for that same loaf of bread. So from 80 something cents to a buck and a half. You guys with me? You do the math on the percent of, it, of inflation for foodstuffs of basic, which is bread, over the last few years and tell me the economy is doing great. Yes, yes. But hey, if you think everything's going fantastic, I'm with you. I'll back you up 100% that that's what you think. Yes? So learn to be your own first whatever. I bake my own bread. I purchase bread once in a while, but I bake it more and more and more. I bake my own cookies. Yeah, I know somebody's gonna say, Rick, I don't know how you're tying those together. Well, let me tell you what, I'm not buying cookies and I ain't buying bread. I'm making it myself and I'm learning a skill and I will be my own baker. I am my own baker. You guys with me? And this, this year I'm gonna do my garden again and I will be my own farmer to a certain extent. So you guys, whatever this is, bring it down. By the way, that was practical preparedness, not basic emergency preparedness. So start with your basic emergency preparedness if you can. Work your way up to practical preparedness and you will be prepared for these worst case scenarios. Yes? Okay, tomorrow that, that convoy thing is supposed to go down to Texas. That whole thing looks like it's just a problem. And if my recommendation to you is if you don't have a purpose, if you don't have a plan, stay away from it. Not telling you what to do. I don't tell anybody what to do. It's only my advice because it's just, it looks like it's a bad idea, but that's just me. Yes. Yes. It looks like a setup almost, but what do I know? It's an election year. Yes. I'm sure everything is just fine, but that's tomorrow. And we'll see what's going to happen over the next couple of days with that. Uh, some American troops got killed in the Middle East because they're using uh, those uh, drone weapons. Uh, the war between Russia and that stuff hasn't gone away. Uh, North and South Korea are being jerks to each other, but they've been doing that for like 60 or 70 years. Uh, Korea's just, I mean, uh, Korea. No, China, China's just waiting if they're smart about the whole Taiwan thing until something else blows up. You guys with me? So there's lots of things all over the place. And then you look at the environmental issues of cold and it's hot and it's hotter than cold and this and that. And what I'm getting at is, there's plenty of reasons for you to be prepared and to start right here. Basic emergency preparedness, be your own first, whatever, learn to take care of yourself because what's coming is an inevitable. 
you're not stopping it, and no one is coming to save you. Okay, well, that was depressing. Let's try to end up on something positive. Did I mention I made new cookies? It was a new recipe, and it, and it had these little lemon cream cheese. It was good. So, so you guys know. Yes? So I was happy. All right, there's a happy thought. This one, I'm leaving you on a happy thought. I'm getting ready to take some over to the neighbor's house and share with them because I like sharing. Okay, I hope this finds you well. I hope you are doing the best you can at being happy. I hope no matter what, you stay positive. And I hope whatever comes your way that you are being prepared.